Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be going over my favorite features and shortcuts in Sublime Text. So Sublime Text is the editor that I use in most of my videos, and I get tons of questions about how I'm doing certain things or what features I'm using. So we'll cover my favorites here. Uh, so learning how to use the features and shortcuts of the editor that you're using can definitely help you be more productive and get things done more quickly. Now this video will be for Sublime Text on the Mac OS X operating system. So if you're on Windows, then I have a video for that as well. So I'll put a link to that in the description section below. Uh, now I was going to do this as one single video, but the shortcuts are so different between the operating systems that it was best just to split these into separate videos. Okay, so the features that we're gonna go over in this video will be features that will be available on the default installation of Sublime Text. So you won't need any of the additional packages or anything else that I've installed with mine. Uh, but if you are curious what packages and setup I'm using, then I do have a separate video on that as well. So I'll also put a link to that in the description section uh, below also. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, the feature that I use most often and the one that I get asked about the most is the multi-cursor functionality. So I use this a lot in my videos to speed up certain things, but I also use it all the time in my daily coding as well. Uh, so this is also what we'll spend the most time on because there are a lot of different things that we can do with this. Uh, so for people who don't know what this is, uh, it's basically a way to have multiple cursors at once. Now at first that might not sound useful, but let's see some examples and see why this is so awesome. So I have a blank HTML file open here. And let's say that we wanted to write some sample HTML code to put into a project. So for example, we'll create an unordered list with 10 different items. So I'll create an unordered list by hitting UL and tab to complete that. And now we want 10 list items. And let's say that within those list items, we want each one to be an H1 tag. Uh, so we could create one list item and then copy and paste that 10 times, or we can use multiple cursors to just type them all out at once. Uh, so to do this, I'm gonna hit enter and make 10 blank lines. So we already have one. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So now we have 10 blank lines. I'm just gonna bring the cursor uh, there to the beginning. And now I'm gonna create a new cursor on each line by clicking on the first line like I've done here and then holding down the command key and clicking on each spot where I want a new cursor. So I'm gonna hold down command and just click where I want these multiple cursors. So you can see that it's creating a new cursor on each of these lines. And once we have those cursors in place, then we can just start typing and it will type that content in all of the cursor locations. So if I want a list item, then I can just type LI and hit tab. And if I want an H1 tag now, then I can hit uh, type in H1 and hit tab. And now let's put some text within that H1 tab. So I'll save that. So we can see how that typed out multiple lines for us all at once. So using that command click is one way to get multiple cursors. Now another use case for this would be if we wanted to edit something in multiple places. So for example, let's say that we wanted to change all of the H1 tags in this list to be H2 tags. Now you might be thinking that you can just do a standard find and replace all. And in this example you could, but a shortcut for that is to just click up here in the first H1 and then press Control Command G. And we can see that that highlights all of our H1 tags for editing. So then we could just uh, edit all of those to be an H2 and save that. So that changed all of the instances of the H1 tags. Uh, but in a larger document, you might have some H1 tags outside of this list that you don't wanna change. So simply highlighting and changing all of them might not be what we want. So I'm gonna undo this and go back to H1 tags and save that. And to get back to one cursor, you can just uh, do a regular click anywhere in the document. So now let's say that we only wanna change certain H1 tags. So let's say that we wanna change the last five H1 tags here to be H2s. Now, one way you could do this is by clicking here where we want to start and then holding down command and just double clicking all of these instances that we want to change. And that's creating multiple cursors at those locations, but that takes a while. Uh, there's actually a shortcut that we can use that will highlight the next match for us and create a new cursor. Uh, so if I just, uh, select the first H1 that we want to change here and then press command D and then keep pressing command D until we highlight all of the uh, uh, H1 tags that we want to change. So I hit command D until I hit the bottom of the document. Now if I kept hitting command D then it would loop around here to the top but that's not what we want right now. Um, so now we can change all of these bottom H1 tags by uh, just highlighting all those using that command D and then changing those to H2s. 
So we can see that we were able to use those multiple cursors to only change those where we wanted. Um, okay, now another awesome thing that we can do with multiple cursors is to copy and paste multiple things at once. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Uh, well, for example, I have a snippets file open here as well uh, with some text on some different lines. So we can see that we have 10 items here on 10 different lines. Uh, so let's say that we want these items to be the text that is inside of our HTML list items. So how could we do this? Well, some people might just, you know, copy and paste these one at a time, uh, but that would take a really long time, especially if our list was even larger than this. So instead, let's just highlight all of these at once and then copy and paste those. So I'm going to hold in command and click at the end of each line like we saw before uh, to create a cursor at the end of each of these lines. And now I'm going to highlight the text by holding in command shift and then using the left arrow uh, and it should go all the way to the beginning of that text. And now I'm going to copy that by pressing command C. So now our 10 cursors here all copied those 10 different lines. So now let's go back to our HTML list and now let's highlight the 10 locations that we want to change. So to do that, we can click in our text up here at the top that says test, and then we can hold in command and press D all the way uh, until we get all the way down here to the bottom. And remember that command D creates a new cursor each time. So now we have 10 cursors here all at the end of our uh, sample text there. So now that we have all 10 of those highlighted, then we can simply paste in what we copied by pressing command V and we can see that it pastes in our 10 copied items into our 10 different locations. Now, when you copy and paste multiple items like this, you have to have the same number of cursors that you use to copy in order to paste. Uh, if you don't, then it will paste all of the items and that can be pretty ugly. Um, so for example, let me just show you what that would look like. So I'm gonna go down here to the bottom of the document and create a few blank lines here. And I'm just going to create uh, two cursors. So I'm going to hold in command and create another cursor there. So remember, we have 10 items copied, but now we only have two cursors. So if I paste in with just two cursors, then we can see that it pastes in all 10 of our items in both of those spots. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, it might be what you wanted to do, but it might not be. Uh, so if you have 10 cursors like we did with our list, then it will just paste uh, one item per cursor like it did here in our HTML list. So this multi-cursor copy and paste trick has saved me a ton of time, more times than I can count. It's really awesome once you get the hang of it. Now, another thing that I use this multi-cursor functionality for is to split things out and make them more readable. Uh, so for example, if I go over here to my snippets file and look down here at the bottom, so this snippet down here at the bottom is a real example of my path environment variable. Now, if you don't know what that is, then don't worry about it. It's just basically a list of directories on your machine where your terminal looks for commands. Now, all of these directories are currently separated by colons, so that's not really readable right now, especially if this was to contain a lot more directories than it currently does. So let's say that I wanted to split these up onto different lines so that I could read this a little better. So to do this, I can simply highlight the first colon here and now I'm just going to hold in command and press D until I highlight the last colon. So now we have multiple cursors here. So to replace those colons with a new line, I can just simply hit enter and we can see that now they're split up onto different lines. And those being split up like that makes it a lot more readable. Um, okay, so now that we saw a few examples of using this in HTML, let's look at a quick example of how you might use this in Python. So we'll just do a quick overview of the few things uh, that we just now learned. So I have a sample Python script opened up here. So let me switch over to that. So this is from my object oriented video where we started learning about classes and manually setting attributes. Now this is an actual mistake that I made in that video. So if you look here, I created an employee one and an employee two, and then I'm setting some attributes for both of those. So I set some employee one attributes here, and this is supposed to be where I'm setting employee two attributes, but you can see that I accidentally set these on employee one again. So all of these should actually be employee two. So we could go through and manually fix these, or we can simply use multi-cursors to uh, just click on this employee one here, and then press command D until we highlight all of the ones that we wanna change. Now remember, this isn't a global change. We don't wanna change all the employee ones, just the four that we made a mistake with here. So now that we have those multiple cursors, then I can just come in here and do a backspace on the one and make that a two. 
And now let's say that our boss tells us that this uh, EMP variable name isn't descriptive enough and that we need to change it to something more descriptive. So we want these EMP1 and EMP2 to actually be employee1 and employee2 spelled out. So in this case, since we want to change all of these, then we can just highlight this EMP underscore here and then to just highlight all of these in the document, then we can press control command G and then change these to whatever we want. So now that we have all of those highlighted, then we can come in here and just type out employee. Okay, so that's a look at the multi-cursor functionality. Now that's by far my favorite feature in Sublime Text, and this is also becoming more popular in other editors as well. So even if you're not using Sublime Text, then check if the editor that you are using has multi-cursor functionality and start using it if it does, because it'll save you a ton of time doing stuff like this. Okay, so now let's look at some more features and shortcuts that I use a lot in Sublime. So one feature that I use all the time is switching between tabs and creating multiple panes. Uh, so first of all, we can see that we already have multiple tabs open here with multiple files open. So to switch through these tabs with a keyboard shortcut, we can simply hold down Command and Option and then use the left and right arrows to switch through these tabs. So that's how I'm switching through these tabs right now. Now, if we want to close a tab, then we can press Command and W, and that'll close down a tab. Now, to reopen a closed tab, if you, op if you close that on accident, then you can hit Command, Shift, and T, and it'll reopen that closed tab. So command W to close a tab and command shift T to reopen a close tab. Now, if you're a Chrome user, then that should be familiar to you because it's the same keyboard shortcuts for Google Chrome. And I'm glad that Sublime Text used those familiar shortcuts. Um, okay, so now that we've looked at tabs, now let's look at how to set multiple uh, panels. Now, this is something that I use a lot, especially when I'm doing something like web development, where I want to be able to see the HTML and the CSS at the same time, or maybe look at a Django or Flask view and a template at the same time, or anything like that. So there are a lot of different panel layouts that we can use. If we press Command, Option, and 2, then we can see that it will open two panels side by side in a column layout, and we can drag any tabs uh, over here that we would like so that we can see these uh, at the same time. So now I have my snippets viewable over here uh, as well as the uh, Python code here. Now if we hold in Command, Option, and 3, then it'll open up uh, three columns side by side and we can drag uh, the files here so that we can view uh, three files at once. So this is extremely useful if you're working on front-end code and you want to see your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS all at once. Now if we press uh, Command Option 4, then it'll open up four columns. Now I feel like this starts to get a little crowded and less practical, but I guess if you had a very large monitor, then maybe some would find it useful. Now if you press Command Option and 5, then it still opens only four panels, but it'll split your four panels into a grid. And I think this would be more practical on a larger monitor, uh, but I still don't use this often. I mainly stick to the uh, two panels or the three panels. Now, if you prefer to uh, stack them on top of each other rather than the side by side, then you can hold in Command Option Shift 2, and that'll open up two rows instead of two columns. So we can see here I have the Python on top and the HTML here on the bottom. And the snippets tech, uh, tab is still down here at the bottom as well. And if you ever just want to get back to a single window, then you can do that by uh, pressing Command Option and 1, and that'll take you back to the single window. Okay, so another nice quick shortcut that I like is being able to move lines around using control command and then the up and down arrows. Uh, so for example, let me bring up the HTML here. And let's say that we wanted to move a few of these items around. So instead of copying and paste them in different places, we can simply click on the line that we want to move. So I'm gonna move this uh, bottom row here and I'm gonna move it up to the top. So we can do this just by clicking on this line and then holding down control command and then using the up and down arrows to move this wherever we want it to go. So if I move this uh, all the way up to the top, then we can see that that was a lot easier than just copying and pasting it up there. So let's say that we wanted to reverse this entire list. So we could just put our cursor on these lines and then again, 
that's control command and the up and down arrows. So I can move the, uh, the top item to the bottom and then these bottom items to the top. And if we do this enough times, then we can quickly uh, switch that list around. So that's a lot faster than just simply cutting and pasting all of those items just one at a time. Um, okay, so the rest of these features are going to be really quick sh uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so first of all, in my videos, I'll often run Python code using Sublime Text. So Sublime has a built-in build system where it'll try to run the code of whatever language you're using. Uh, so let me open up our Python code here, and we can see that at the bottom we have this print statement where it prints out this employee one's email. And the keyboard shortcut for running code is Command and B. And we can see that when we hit Command B, it prints out the email down here at the bottom. Now by default, Sublime will try to guess how you want to try to run certain code, but if you're using different versions of Python or anything like that, then I have a separate video on Sublime build systems showing how you can set those up exactly how you want. And if you ever want to get rid of this output down here, then you can just press escape and it hides that window. Okay, so another thing that I like to use a lot is whenever I've opened a directory is to get more screen space and collapse the sidebar here. So to collapse the sidebar, we can hold down command and then press K and then B. And we can see that that collapsed that sidebar down. Now you wanna be holding in command the whole time. So if we wanna open that back up again, then we can hold down command. And while holding that down, we press K and then B and it opens that back up. Okay, so something else that I use a lot is the keyboard shortcut for commenting out code. And to do that, we can use the command forward slash uh, shortcut. And this works for multiple languages as well. So over here in my HTML, if I wanna comment out these last five list items, then I can just highlight those and press control or uh, command forward slash, sorry. Then we can see it comments out those last five items. Um, if I come over here to the Python code, then we can do this as well. So if I just click on this line here and I wanted to comment that out, then that is command forward slash and it comments out that one line or we can highlight multiple lines and press command forward slash and it comments out all of those lines that we had highlighted. So we can see that the HTML and the Python both have different syntax and different ways of commenting their code and Sublime adds those in correctly automatically for each language. So that's extremely useful. Okay, so lastly, another one of my favorite features with Sublime is the command palette. Now you can open the command palette by pressing command shift P. And with the command palette open, you can do a few different things like setting different syntaxes and things like that. But the best thing that you can do is install new packages. Um, and packages allow you to add functionality that currently isn't in Sublime. So for example, you may have noticed that my HTML has been auto formatting throughout the video, and that's an HTML package that auto formats your code for you. And you can also install different packages that uh, change the color schemes and the themes of Sublime and things like that. Now, I've already done a video on the packages and other preferences that I have set in my Sublime, so I won't go into those details in this video, but I will put a link to that video in the description section below if anyone is interested. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful and learned some new things about Sublime Text. So I get a lot of comments asking about these features. So hopefully that cleared up any questions that anyone would have. Uh, now, if you have any favorite features or shortcuts that I didn't mention in this video, then feel free to leave a comment below and let me know about it. Now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.